Hi there, this is Jill from Thousand Lashes. I'm here to talk to you today about creating a classic lash set. This is where most of us lash artists begin our journey. I'm here to talk to you today about prepping lashes, about attachment, about isolation, and also about choosing the right glue for you. If you like this video, please like it down below with a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop any questions below. I'm always happy to answer any questions and be your mentor. Also, please subscribe to this channel so you can see more videos like this. And if you stick around till the end, I'll have some extra bonus tips for you. Thanks again for joining this video and I hope you enjoy what I have to teach you. Here are the products I'll be using in this video. This is the lash bath that foams up really nicely and cleans off and sanitizes the lashes. This is the primer that I'll be using from Thousand Lashes. I really only use this primer on clients that are oily. So depending on my client, if I'll use this or not. This is the Velour Glue. This is my go-to glue that I use. It works great in a wide range of humidity and temperatures and also dries super fast, like 0.05 seconds. So I really like that. Um, this is a great tape. This is the sensitive tape and it holds back lashes wonderfully, uh, but doesn't pull up the extension. So when you're doing lash layering, this is a great tape to use. This is a silicone tape that I use that I put on top of my iPads to get the errant lower lashes and I really like it because the glue doesn't really stick to it so I don't get stickies on my iPads. Here are some great tweezers that I use. Uh, these two are for isolation. This one is called the dolphin tweezer and this one is a 45 degree angle and they really hold back the lashes great. And this is my favorite boot tweezer, which I love it. It's really great, uh, picks up right at the tip there. And last but not least, this has really been a game changer for me. This is the Bonder. Uh, a little bit goes a really long way, and I really like that uh, it dries the glue from the inside out, and it really gives me great retention. So this is a must have. For this model, I decided to do a doll eye mapping because her eyes are wide set and she wanted it to look really natural, we used a C curl. I start by placing the iPads a small distance from the waterline. I try and capture all the lower lashes underneath and then have her close to make sure that the iPads are in the right spot. Once I figure out that they are in a good spot, I apply a silicone tape. I really like this tape because it not only holds the lower lashes and is gentle, but it also somewhat repels the glue so I don't have stickies. Here is the lash bath. I apply a bit of the lash bath to each one of the lip wands and I go through each and every lash to clean them. I also apply some water to get rid of the residue of the soap. At the end, I take a cotton round and just quickly dry off the rest. Now it's time to begin applying the lashes. It's really, really important to learn isolation, probably the most important part of the service. I prefer using either curved tweezers or ones that are 45 degrees because it holds back the surrounding lashes. Once you master the isolation, you can begin applying each lash individually. What I'm showing here is different angles of how I actually go in there, isolate, and apply one lash per lash. When we're applying classic lashes or really any lash, we want to apply a lash that is about two to three millimeters longer than the natural lash. When applying the lash, you want to apply it about 0.5 to one to two millimeters away from the lid. 
it's really important you get that attachment there and get as much surface area applied. I really try and focus on attaching the base of the extension to the base of the natural lash. Getting the base attached properly really helps with retention. With classic lashes, you can apply the lash either on top, on the side, or underneath. I usually base it on how the lash is presented to me. If a lash is super curly, it may be best to apply it underneath so it mimics the same curl and has the best contact. It's also super important to get the lash going in the correct direction. When I first started, my directions were all over the place. If a lash is kind of wonky, you still want to correct it with the lash extension. When doing classic lashes, I do really like using the flat ones. I find that the shape of the flat ones have better connection. Because they are concave, I find that they actually lock onto the natural lash and again have better retention. I do typically work from the outside towards the inner corners, but when first starting out, I do recommend working on the outer corners, then the inner corners, and then the middle. This does help save with time. It is important to talk to your clients about aftercare, which is having them use the lash bath every day and brushing their lashes. And also educating them that we lose two to five lashes per day. So it is normal to come in for the next fill within two to three weeks and that they will need to replace the lashes that they lost. My most helpful tips and takeaway from this video is that beginning as a lash artist takes a ton of practice and patience. Everyone beginning this industry is not an expert. Practice, practice, practice. I promise with all the practice, you've got this. Shaking your glue is super important. If you're doing it by hand, I recommend doing it for at least two minutes, or if you have a vortex shaker, at least 30 seconds. Also, finding the best glue is really important. You need to consider your temperature, your humidity, and your speed, period. If you find the right glue, it will really work the best for you. Also, proper attachment. Again, I think I've already mentioned taking the base of the extension and applying it to the natural lash and applying it the proper distance from the lid. Also, applying the proper direction. This takes a while to learn, but once you get it down, it really helps improve the look of your sets. And aftercare and educating your clients is half the battle to gaining the best retention for your clients. At the end of the service, it's really important to check for stickies. Right now, I'm making sure that the lashes are not stuck together or stuck to the iPad. At the end of the service, I apply a very small amount of bonder to each of the lashes. This really helps dry the glue from the inside out. It cuts down on the fumes and it also gives really good retention because it creates a very flexible bond of the glue onto the natural lash. Make sure you give a good brush through the lashes, again, making sure that there aren't any stickies, making sure they're, they're not sticking to the iPads. And when you're ready, you can remove the iPads really slowly and again, carefully. they're pretty stuck to the client's skin. When the client opens up her eyes, make sure that none of the upper lashes are stuck to the lower lashes. 
the before and after. And a beautiful smile after this natural classic set.